Yeah, of course, it's, it's always a difficult topic, um, especially at a digital conference to talk about defense. But I think uh, it's also important to talk about reality, what's happening in the world, and of course also how we protect our wealth and our social systems. And uh, when we talk about artificial intelligence and defense, the first thing people say to me, it's about killer robots and killer drones. The first association that people have when you combine the two topics. And uh, I think that's, that's definitely not the key subject on it. First of all, we live in a world that's very volatile, as you just heard from eight, and it's constantly changing. And unfortunately, there are not only good li people living on that planet. So unfortunately, we have to deal with these kind of things. But the second thing is also to understand what artificial intelligence means in in the combination with defense. In our company, for example, artificial intelligence is mostly used for totally different purposes and mostly is machine learning. We do, for example, we do satellite imaging. Uh, and you use your s uh, smartphone, half of the satellite pictures that you have on your smartphone whenever you use any kind of service coming from our company. Um, what we also do in order to provide these services, because you have a lot of clouds on pictures, we select pictures without clouds. So for that, we use machine learning. And that's quite a complicated process because you have to teach them the difference between snow on a mountain and clouds. And that's quite, an, quite a difficult process for a computer. So we are very advanced on machine learning. We use them in all aspects of our life uh, in developing our products and of course also in the execution of our services. The biggest problem that we still have in the discussion on defense is the differentiation between artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the topic of autonomy. And when people come up with the topic of killer drones, killer robots, they always refer to the topic of autonomy, which means there's a machine that becomes more and more intelligent, that thinks for itself, and, and can take actions and decisions for themselves. This is definitely not happening in Europe. This is definitely not happening in companies like ours, where we use artificial intelligence, of course, to improve our products and systems, but we have a very clear charter that for all the products we're going to develop, there's a man in the loop. So it's a very big difference in thinking about using artificial intelligence for the benefit of the humans or going in towards autonomy. And uh, still, I, I think it's important that we understand, and as Aid has already uh, uh, explained, the traditional warfare has changed. It's not a warfare of land, marine, air systems anymore. It's very much a warfare of cybersecurity and very soon also on space. Because we have also to see that uh, Many companies have started to develop, uh, and countries have started to develop products and systems for space warfare. And it's also very difficult to differentiate on spy satellites versus satellite with robot arms uh, and cameras that can be used for different purposes. So there will be a military aspect to everything that is done in, in space coming up. And uh, as you have heard, uh, President Trump already uh, clearly expressed his ambition to crea create his uh, space warfare. Um, and you also heard the Minister of Defense in France saying that the, s the definition of the strategy of defense for France will include from now on also the topic of space. So it is something that will be in our life if we want it or not. And artificial intelligence is playing a major role because what we can see is the development on the IT side is much faster than on the hardware side. So it is going to influence all our products. This is a digital battlefield means in the future we have the connections, of course, w for military satellite with different kind of air systems, marine and land systems. And it's all about sharing information, having um, the intelligence to understand what's going on and to share, analyze the information in real time and distribute it back. This is something that we're going to realize in the what we call future combat air system. And this is really important for Europe's development. Here we talk about 
the next generation of a future combat air system, which is supposed to be much more than just an aircraft. It's a combination of different systems, what we call system of systems, and we will combine land, marine, air, space into one combat system, enabling standardization of communication, standardization of con connectivity, enabling to share the connaissance of all the situational um, and ensuring that we distribute it back to the systems, but only the information needed in order to be in control of the situation. This is already happening today. We have tested, for example, a few months ago, already over the Baltic Sea to fly with a Learjet and independent drones to fly in formation in swarms and then have independent reactions to situations where the drone have to decide for themselves and react to it and then come back to formation. So this is already working. So we have tested that already and uh, many other nations are working on the similar systems. So the, the intelligence going into the systems is advancing at light speed and uh, same as you see in your private environment, this is also taking now influence in the development of these new systems. What is important is, is of course also to be able to secure that communication is not changed. It's not only about interruption of communication, in the future it will be very much important to understand is the information received still the information that was sent and was the information modified on the way. Because as you see in, in many of the software developments and even on the smartphones, the, the progress is so fast that you it's, it's literally almost impossible to differentiate if a video or an audio was modified or not. So you don't know if the original information is still the same information that you see or hear in your, in your current situation. So it will be very important also to guarantee information being the same as sent and received. And this will be, of course, very crucial for these kind of system because if you cannot ensure that you have unjeopardized communication between all these systems, you have, you have secured that cybersecurity is the highest standard level going down to chip level, we cannot secure our prosperity in the future. We will not be able to handle these kind of systems. So machine learning will be in every part of the development of these products and systems. Artificial intelligence, first of all, I'm a strong believer that it's still brute force computing, but on the way towards artificial intelligence, all the technology leapfrogging that we will see will go into these systems. And what is different to the past, because in the past we developed systems for 20, 30 years, and when you finished and go went into serial production, it was based on technology 20, 30 years old. This is starting now and will go into, into serial um, operation early as 2040, 2045. But imagine in 2045 to run a system which is based on technology of 2018, 2019. Not possible. So what, what will be the challenge to all the companies and countries involved is to leapfrog technology several times along the development. So that means before we even deliver the first serial production, we have ready to release two, three upgrades to be into operation with a state-of-the-art system. And that has never been done in Europe before, and this is something which will be a tremendous challenge for all the countries and companies involved. But it's also a unique chance, because uh, I just had a discussion with the Bulgarian president about uh, involvement of smaller countries into a co future combat air system like that. And this is exactly a great opportunity to demonstrate that we are really working together in Europe, because here we need the knowledge, the capabilities of all the nations in Europe to combine and to avoid that we fragment systems again. So here we can work together on research and development. In order to develop these kind of system, we have to cross technology barriers that we have seen in the past and we have to develop new systems. But it also gives uh, smaller countries the opportunity to participate and to join and to add to these kind of systems. What we also do is we use start using the sensors in our products, which we have not in the past. Um, so in the future, uh, a product like an A400M transport aircraft will have up to 250,000 sensors. And all the data will be collected in order to improve the predictive and preventive maintenance. 
So it will be realized in, it will analyzed in real time. It will be consolidated in data lakes and analyzed in order to support the customer, in order to reduce uh, maintenance, and what is even more important, aircraft on the ground time. So this is, is currently in development. What is, of course, the requirement of our customers, that all kind of data like that will be stored in a private cloud. So this will not go to Google and Amazon. This will be all stored, of course, in uh, national private clouds in order to ensure security at highest level. But it, of course, it gives the, the, the nations a total different uh, operability and availability of their systems in order to be more efficient than they have been in the past. So we will see AI and machine learning will be a very dominant part of the further development of products and systems in defense, uh, especially also in Europe. Um, unfortunately, our world is not uh, getting better. It's more volatile, it's more complex. We see more crises coming up. So we also have to understand in Europe how do other countries will develop systems and we have to understand it in order to prepare to defend ourselves. So artificial intelligence will play a major role. <laughs> Autonomy is for us out of question, at least for European uh, companies working in defense. We are committed to work up to the level of ethics that we have defined in our home nations. And it means that the man in the loop will be a fundamental criteria of further developments in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.